so hello and welcome student this is uh, for today's class so let us start so we may 415 algebra okay and uh, we are discussing uh, field theory field theory field theory okay so um so uh, the, the main idea what we discussed uh, in the last lectures that uh, if you have a field um, F uh, and then you can talk about the polynomial ring over F okay and then you have a e to the polynomial say Px over F then you go modulo the ideal generator by that and that will give you a finite and then that will give you a field k okay so this is the process how to make you find out a field from an existing field and not only that uh, your the field a is actually embedded inside k what does that mean that mean this will be there will be one one um, um, field homomorphism from f to k okay so so the copy of you sitting inside k right and then we, we, we said that uh, how your r uh, from r you make the complex number c okay so which was that which was you just rx uh, i mean i mean to say isomorphic to okay and then you question out by the polynomial uh, x square plus one okay and uh, now um, maybe the interesting thing is that how do you make finite fields and how you i mean what how they look like so we will use a similar idea so um let me define a little bit about finite field okay so um so uh if, what, what is the definition say finite a finite field is a field with finite number of elements number of elements okay so any field having finitely many elements uh, are uh, is called a finite field okay and uh, uh, so as we know that uh, any field has characteristics either zero or p so you can ask uh, for what is the characteristic of finite field so this is a simple question you can ask that uh, what is the characteristics of character sticks of of a finite field okay um, so the answer uh, will just will give you answer don't worry but uh, in general it cannot be a composite number right that we already know because the moment you have a composite number then uh, if it is a characteristics then I mean then it cannot be characteristic because composite number you can write down product of two numbers so that allow you to find out your divisor right so it's not possible so uh, um, so now question is that whether uh, characters of finite field can be zero or not like like uh, this is a natural question okay now let us try to understand what happens so um, so uh, so if a field if um, characteristics carry Characteristics of a field is zero. And then what happens? Then you see that then the field uh, must have uh, infinitely many element in. Finitely many elements. Why? Uh, 
so this is why because see when you have a field so you know that the field has uh, you have zero and one obviously this is and I'm saying field uh, I mean say non trivial right so once you have a zero and one and uh, then you can add one by one and get a two and three now recall that uh, the character is zero so what does that mean that means there is no integer so that if we add one then you become a zero so what does that mean that means if we add one more time you will get one four five and so on so you will get back all these positive integers and because this is a field so the negative elements minus one minus two this all will be belongs to the field right this all will be they all belongs to belongs to the field whatever is the field of characteristic zero okay so now hence what does that mean hence that, that is that is uh, z will be sitting in z so maybe uh, let me write down the field to say if so this is my field uh, capital f okay so z will be sitting in z capital f uh, whatever now once there is sitting in capital f that means and Q is also sitting in capital F because Q is the um, you remember uh, what are the relationship between Q and Z? Q is nothing but the field of fractions, right? So as Q is the field of fractions of z so that is what that is smallest field field containing z okay so that uh, so q is subset of if right because if is a field containing z and q is the smallest field containing z so what does that mean that means q must see the inside is a field of f they can be same also okay so what does that mean that means uh, this implies that every 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 characteristics uh, zero field contains Q as a subfield, right? Subfield. And hence the finite field cannot have character zero. So so thus thus every finite field Have characteristics prime. So they will be only prime prime number. Okay, finite field. And once you know the characters is prime, then you can also find out uh, what is the smallest subfield that can that is sitting inside the field. So. So, uh, so let um, uh, if be a field with uh, what about so you can my, I can ask you the question uh, what about the converse so is converse true it's my question you think about it what does that mean? That means if you have a field whose character is a prime number, does that mean that is a finite field? Okay, so you can find out that. Okay, uh, I don't know. I mean, this is your homework. Okay, whether it's fine or not. So let P be a uh, field with uh, uh, characteristics. Characteristics. Uh, say p and then, then what happens then you can obviously you can start with 0 1 they are sitting inside the field a and ends 2 3 right 
till p minus 1 right because once you have reached p minus 1 and if you add one more thing then it become p that it is 0 because of p the factor is right so so this this set is actually sitting inside this is subset of f and not only that you, you can you can just uh, just a restriction of multiplication so the that is restriction of addition and multiplication addition and multiplication of if so let me write down this set S if mix if S is a field isomorphic to uh, Z not P Z right which is a P obviously is also a P the finite field with P many elements okay so let me write down this symbol F P means finite field with P many elements okay so so what does that mean that means thus uh, F P is sitting inside uh, if so if you have a field which characterizes p then the fp always sitting inside f right so what does that mean that means if for every finite field also fp is sitting inside uh, if so where p is a characteristic of the field p uh, field okay so now question is that um, so this part is okay i think it's what you understood properly so uh, um, if the field is is zero, it cannot be finite. It's infinite. If it is, um, it's, yeah. So yeah, it is always infinite because it contains you. But uh, if uh, if it is finite field, then the characteristic must be prime because uh, it cannot be zero. Zero means that Q is sitting inside that thing. And it can be finite, right? The converse part I ask you that whatever the converse part you know, means if you know that a field has characterized this prime number does that mean the field is finite or not think over it okay and now I am asking another question suppose we have a field whose characteristic is prime then what is the smallest kind of field which is sitting inside f and this answer is uh, fp where p is the characteristic of the field and thus um, Thus, uh, every finite field, thus every finite field, uh, um, okay, so every finite field contains, contains a P, and hence every finite field is an extension of or rather I should say finite extension because it's finite field right uh, so we must say that is a finite extension of finite extension of fp right so uh, so what does that mean that means uh, um, whenever you have an field you know that it characterizes some prime so fp is sitting inside that finite field and then uh, because this election sum so it is so thus thus if we if is a uh, finite field right so every finite field f if um, is a finite dimensional vector space finite dimensional vector space over FP uh, of dimension say something some dimension dimension say choose something say n okay so what does that mean that means 
so if we can be written as so element of if we can be written as uh, and then you can choose obviously uh, okay before that let us choose uh, them as means okay so your base is right so you write down that so so there exist exist a basis of if over if p containing in elements right that is the meaning of dimension Living okay, say so this is my basis. Say, uh, I'm thinking, say, alpha one, alpha two, whatever, just write down, okay. And thus, uh, you can write down element of if s the linear combination of this. So, this is some kind of um, c1 alpha one plus c2 alpha two and dot 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 c and alpha n okay where c i's are element of the finite field because this is over f p right clear so what does that mean that means uh, you can count the number of elements inside the field f and then what is the cardinality of f so you see that uh, for every c i you have p many options because they are element of p and how many places you can have choice in many places so this cardinality you have to be power in okay so so what do we just prove we prove that this is important theorem we just prove that every finite field with characteristic p p has P power in many elements P power in many elements mm, for some for some natural number in okay so maybe I will give some example first and um, obviously you can ask whatever the converse so converse part uh, but converse part, converse part I need converse part so converse part means yeah, uh, does that exist a finite field of p power in many elements for every p and every n and, and the answer is yes but I I cannot prove right now because I need something for algebraic extension algebraic close up those idea but I will prove it in maybe next in the next lecture okay but um, converse is also true that is uh, there exists a field of, um, of field with people in many elements Elements for every p and n. Okay, every p means every prime p. Every uh, you must say every prime p and n is natural uh, natural number. Okay, but uh, I need some more techniques that I will develop slowly, and then I can discuss those things. Okay. But before that, um, uh, let me discuss some of the examples, simple examples, okay? And then I will come back to more uh, general definition of the things, okay? So examples. So so how do how do we, so so what does that mean? So we learn that given a finite field, you have um, uh, say uh, number will prime power something, right? And uh, I know how to find out also those uh, those extension. Whenever you want to find out extension from another field, they need to just uh, go to the polynomial ring and question out by the irreducible polynomial, right? So, for example, um, 
how to how to construct a field with four elements okay this is a simple question how to find right and uh, the answer is what so um, uh, so 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 see you write down four as like a two square right this is kind of p power n of this format so p equal to your two and your n equal to two right so what does that mean that means that you need to um, find out uh, okay first of all p equal to means what that means characteristics of uh, for element so let's, suppose this is my field f I want to find out what is this okay so my, I just find out the characteristic if it's 2 right so that's uh, yeah, z mod 2 z which is f2 this is inside f right we just got from our previous results and then how to find out the extension and the similar technique what we did last time so we start with uh, f2 x the polynomial ring over f2 and then we need to question out by a polynomial so let me just question out by this polynomial and check okay so so uh, so i'm taking this px equal to x square x plus y is so note that this is an irreducible irreducible polynomial polynomial over f2 okay again i obviously need to ask me why why so because uh, so uh, so this is a degree to polymer right so if you reduce it so what does that mean that means you can write down it's a product of two linear factors right and hence uh, so hence uh, the linear factor is root over f2 right what is that is the meaning of linear polynomial right but f2 has only two elements 0 and 1 and uh, check that p of 0 is what p of 0 equal to 1 is also uh, p of 1 and this is not equal to 0 uh, this is mod 2 so I mean mod 2 ok so thus uh, um, px is irreducible is irreducible over um, over um, f2 ok is okay. it's irreducible over f2 and uh, the moments you have irreducible polynomials then you know that uh, f2x uh, this is a principal ideal domain so this will generate a maximum ideal and then present out by that thing that will gives you uh, a field which uh, contains f2 obviously and this is the field which i'm talking about f of four elements now the question is that why it has four it has four elements uh, uh, the, you recall that if degree is n, last time we proved it, if degree of if is n, then uh, then um, uh, that alpha, right? So um, uh, so so I write down alpha equal to say x bar, which is nothing but uh, x plus and uh, that polynomial generated by px okay and what we prove we prove that uh, so, so this is degree 2 polynomial so we have to go to degree 1 so thus 1 and alpha forms a basis over basis of f over f2 right this theory we already proved in the last lecture. Okay, so this forms a basis. So what does that mean? That means f2 element of f2 will be of the form. Um, sorry, element of f will be of the form. Um, 
so they are in the combination of this right so you have 0 1 and then alpha and 1 plus alpha these are the only elements right uh, uh, and you can ask uh, uh, then uh, how to do like multiplication additions for example addition is obvious 0 plus 1 is 1 1 plus alpha is equal to um, 1 plus alpha right 1 plus 1 equal to 0 alpha into alpha is what so you can write down alpha plus alpha which is 2 alpha which is 0 right and similarly alpha alpha plus 1 plus alpha and you check that this is 1 like that and multiplication is important so in multiplication table you can do it um, so let me just 2 3 4 and then 1 2 3 4 right so so 0 1 alpha 1 plus alpha and this is my i am writing multiplication table Zero one alpha one plus alpha now zero and two zero so this is all zero and this is this is zero 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 and one into one 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 into alpha equal to alpha is one plus alpha similarly one alpha one plus alpha right now the interesting part is what is what is your alpha into alpha so alpha into alpha is alpha square right but alpha square is what? So here you see uh, alpha satisfies this equation, right? Alpha satisfies this equation, right? So what does that mean? That means alpha square plus alpha plus 1 equal to 0, right? So alpha square equal to what? Alpha square equal to 1 plus alpha, right? So when you multiply alpha into alpha, you will have 1 plus alpha. But if you multiply alpha into 1 plus alpha, then what will have? You will have um, alpha into alpha plus alpha square, alpha square equal to 1 plus alpha. So it is 1 plus 2 alpha, it is 1, right? Similarly, 1 plus alpha into alpha uh, is nothing but 1 and 1 plus alpha into 1 plus alpha whole square. So that is also nothing but 1 plus alpha whole square. Then 1 square plus alpha square plus 2 alpha, but 2 alpha equal to 0, and 1 plus alpha equal to 1 plus alpha square equal to 1 plus alpha, so this is equal to alpha. This is alpha. Okay, this is 1 plus alpha equal to 1 plus 1 equal to 2, 2 equal to 0, so it's alpha. Right? So this is the multiplication table, and obviously it, it has, uh, it satisfies all the property. Once you have multiplication table, you can find the inverse, everything, right? For example, what is the inverse of alpha? So you can find that multiple See alpha, if you multiply alpha equal to uh, 1 to alpha, you become 1. So one alpha and alpha alpha is inverse to each other. 1 is the inverse and 0 is not invertible, right? So this is multi, uh, this is the field with four elements, right? Now uh, now you can, the natural question can you do it for any prime? Like uh, uh, question so um, can we do this for any prime is bigger than 2 so what does that mean that means can you find out the field with uh, p square elements okay okay the answer is yes we can find Field with p square many elements. Okay, yeah. So, so I, I obviously I will give you general techniques, but the special case cases are also important. So that's why I'm defining it here. So, uh, so let me just tell you the in special case and how we can do it here. Okay, so um, I need some idea. It's called um, Okay, so let me tell you something called quadratic residue. Okay, so yeah, so this is a new term, so you need to understand what is that. Quadratic residue. 
mod into something is a mod. Okay, let me just write down what the residue first. Uh, module things I don't need right now. I will tell you when I define it. Okay. So what do you mean by quarterly residue? Uh, so so for example, let me start with my FP, then I will give you general definition. So suppose in FP, so you are writing like 0, 1, 2, and P minus 1. Which is also the, so FP means Z mod PZ, right? So I'm writing the elements of these forms. Now you see that here, um, if you take one square, that will be one is also equal to p minus one square. You check it. Okay. Did you check it? Yes. And similarly, uh, so th this is is one, right? Similarly, um, if two square and p minus two square will be same. What is that? Uh, something right so for example so let me take p equal to something say 11 suppose my p equal to 11 okay so uh, so this is true for every such uh, for, uh, prime so i'm just taking an example to understand so p equal to 11 you see that p square equal to this 4 and p minus 11 minus 2 equal to what 9 so 9 square is what 9 square equal to also 4 more p right so this is i, I mean to say that mod 11 mod 11 see 9 into 9 81 81 is nothing but 4 mod 11 oh. because 77 divided by 11 right now 3 square you check what is 3 square it's also uh, this 11 minus 3 whole square right p equal to 11 i chose so uh, why this is happening because if you can write down x equal to y square then also you can write down x equal to minus y square also so that's why I'm taking 3 and P minus 3 also. Okay. Minus Y means P minus Y. Okay. So uh, 3 square is 9. So this is 9. And uh, this is 8 square is also 9. You say you have 55 divisible by 11 and then 55 by 9 equals 64. Okay. Now what is 4 square? 4 square is nothing but 11 minus 4 whole square. And 4 square is nothing but 5. Because 4 into 4 is 6, 16, which is modulo of 11 is 5. Is that okay? Fine. Now, 5 square. So, what is 5 square? So, 5 square is also equal to 11 minus 6 whole square. 11 minus 5 whole square, which is 6, right? Now, 5 square is 3. You check. 25. So, this is 3. And similarly, 6 square is 3 because 6 square is equal to 36, which is... Uh, 33 plus 3 so it's 3 right so so whatever so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 and 0 obviously 0 square equal to 0 now you see that these elements 1 3 4 5 9 these elements can be written as square of some element right so these elements are called the quadratic residue modulo 11 so you understood so 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 what are the elements so 1 3 4 5 9 and 0 so so thus so this uh, 0 1 3 4 5 9 0 is always 0 square right so 0 square right? 0 1 3 4 5 9 are square square means they are square of something square modulo modulo 11 and uh, this and and they are called they are called quadratic residue residues modulo 11 okay so 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 and there is no special about 11 this is true for any integer even every integer you can find out these things okay so in general what do you say so uh, let n be an integer an integer okay also uh, so uh, an integer x 
is said to be to be a quadratic residue residue modulo n if there exists y and then this is that x equal to x congruent to y square mod n then is called a quadratic residue mod n okay so so uh, so whenever you are a prime so you see the for n how many elements are there you have exactly uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 many elements. So this is 6 is what? This is 11 plus 1 by 2. So you can see that if you are a prime number p, then you will remove this one because 0 is always residue. So you have p minus 1. So out of that, half of these are residues, right? So p minus 1 by 2 is non zero quarter residue and plus 1 is 0. So you have uh, p plus 1 many 2 many. Quadratic residues modulo the prime p right so thus the rest are non residual so how many rest are rest elements are there p minus one by two right thus uh, there are uh, p minus one by two many uh, quadratic non residues non residues are there in a period whenever you are inside a finite field of p many elements and then you have such many elements right so now we choose one such element so let alpha be a uh, quadratic quadratic non residues residue modulo p prime and then you write you, you then then uh, then claim then what is my claim? My claim is that the polynomial say px equal to x square minus alpha is irreducible, irreducible over fp. This is my claim. Okay. Now how do you prove such claims? So uh, so again uh, this is a quadratic polynomial. If it is uh, reducible, what does that mean? So if if px is reducible over fp then um, px can be factors Uh, into two linear polynomial over fp right so thus um, uh, px has uh, two roots Two roots uh, over uh, a period. Now let x be a root of px over a p. Then what happened? Then uh, so not x, uh, uh, you choose something so a, a, a b a roots of this, okay then p of a that will be equal to uh, 
a square minus alpha which is equal to zero right and thus alpha equal to a square mod uh, p that prime p so this is a contradiction because alpha is a non residue which is a contradiction which is a contradiction as alpha is a quadratic non residue residue modulo um modulo prime p uh, modulo prime p right so uh, so what does that mean that means that uh, that uh, px equal to alpha uh, sorry x square minus alpha is irreducible over fp so thus we just construct the field f which is fp x go modulo x square minus alpha okay uh, is a field okay the field so this is okay because this is a maximal ideal so it's a field now how many elements are there so so the question what is the connective right so so uh, so what does that mean that means uh, yeah so So we know that uh, uh, alpha has a obviously x square x has a uh, x square minus alpha has a root in f that we proved last time, right? This field contains a root also, and that I am writing down by um, that is a little way down, say maybe x bar. So what is x bar? X bar is um, x plus p x. Adelian by px, right? So is a root of px in f, right? And then you see that and then uh, x bar square x bar x bar, x bar square minus alpha that has to be zero. So this implies alpha equal to x bar square in f capital F, right? So what does that mean? That means um, when you square it, then it becomes element of f a p. So so, um, so so thus the elements of the form. So what are the elements of this? So these are the form. Um, so they generate. Okay. So so let me write down then then one and x bar forms. A basis with degree two, right? P x at degree two basis of F over A P. Okay. So so what are the elements then? So elements are uh, one of the zero, one, two, A P no. So all the P minus one element will come and then uh, one into X. So x one plus x two plus x and p minus one plus x. These are the, all the elements. They are the elements of f. Now you can write. Now you can say that. Uh, so can you write down like product with that? You can also write down two x. You can say that two x will be one of the such elements in the addition formulas. Okay. Now you check that this is satisfy the multiplication table. So my homework uh, find out uh, 
out the uh, multi vacation table for pk to 11 and alpha as a non residue so now what are the residue we find out uh, one three four five nine so you choose say something say two two is non residue right so uh, also the two okay so find out that what is the multiple sentence how it look like okay so this is this is you can also always find out p square many elements and fields with this kind of techniques in general you have a techniques uh, then i need to find define this algebraic closure and other things and then we will uh, prove that uh, whenever you have a prime p and an integer n then you always have a finite field of people and many elements okay so maybe uh, today i will stop here in my lectures i have i will define more general setup uh, of, for algebraic things and algebraic closure of fields and other things and then we will further study this Okay, so let me stop here.